Artisans, today we're discussing the possibility that people, briefly, survive having their heads separated from their bodies, such as when executed by a guillotine. If you're heading off to bed right now, you might not like the answer. Allow me to explain. Technically speaking, you don't need any part of your body except for your brain to be alive. The rest of the body is optional. In fact, there's an entire website dedicated to asking partially paralyzed people questions such as, are you happy? And the tone overall is rather positive. Link in the doobly-doo. The body is really just there to support the brain. Supply it with oxygen-rich blood in the case of the heart and lungs, or with glucose in the case of the digestive tract. But if those things can be supplied from elsewhere, say, tubes in a machine, then you don't need any of those parts. So, in theory, a person can survive as a brain or head in a jar type situation. But this idea causes a very disturbing thought. Throughout history, many people have suffered decapitation, or having their head suddenly severed from their body. If the brain is the only thing needed for conscious experience of life, then does that mean that those heads, however briefly, were conscious and alive? Because nobody has ever survived a decapitation. Yet, we can't exactly ask them. So to try and answer this question, we will first start with stories of decapitations gone strange, and then we will look at evidence from scientific experiments involving animals and medical patients to try and arrive at an informed answer. Historically speaking, France is well known for their beheading practices involving the guillotine. They didn't invent the guillotine, but they did improve it. Before the French version of the guillotine, the death penalty, or capital punishment, was often intended to punish as well as kill. This led to some truly horrifying execution methods. According to A History of the Guillotine by Alistair Kershaw, March 20th, 1792, and after a ludicrous bureaucratic hullabaloo was a decree. Decapitation should be carried out by means of a machine, striking wrongdoers competently, impartially, and as far as possible, kindlily, in the triple tradition of rationality, egalitarianism, and humanitarianism. So importantly, the French thought that the guillotine ended life instantaneously, which they considered to be a kindness. Turns out they were probably wrong, because most of the stories of conscious decapitation come from guillotine executions. The first story comes from 1793. Sources vary on the details somewhat, but here is what they agree upon. During a very high-profile execution of a political assassin named Charlotte Corday, multiple accounts described someone grabbing the detached head from the landing basket, holding it aloft, and slapping it hard on the cheek one or more times. The face of the woman changed expressions immediately following the slap, which occurred mere seconds after decapitation. The facial expression was described as indignant, with reddened cheeks and a scowl of the mouth. At least two accounts described that the person who slapped her face went to jail for causing a public scene. Several decades passed, with multiple other reports of conscious decapitation. None of those reports are reliable enough to include here, but they did spark the imaginations of several 1800 scientists, encouraging them to perform scientific tests. In 1836, those interested in the possibility of brief survival after decapitation requested of a condemned criminal named Pierre-Francois Le Cernier to close his left eye, but leave his right eye open immediately following his execution. However, Lessonier failed to show any signs of consciousness and did not wink as requested by the observers. In 1879, some serious scientific testing went into the execution of a man called Théotime Prunier. Doctors tried calling his name, touching his eyeballs, pinching his cheeks, and even putting foul-smelling ammonia on the end of a brush and inserting it into his nostrils. But the head did not respond to any of this. Probably because, according to most accounts, these tests did not take place until at least five minutes after the guillotine did its job, which is way too long to wait. And finally, probably the most interesting account from a guillotine was the 1905 execution of Henri Lenguil. Dr. Gabriel Bureau had special permission to conduct a test on his head immediately following the execution. 
According to the account given by the doctor, there was very good evidence that Langrille was still conscious for approximately half of a minute after being guillotined. You can read the whole story from the doctor in the reference section. In short, here's what happened. Dr. Bureau called Langwil's name, Langwil, and he opened his eyes, which fixed and focused themselves on the doctor's eyes. Then Langwil closed his eyes. Dr. Bureau called his name a second time, Langwil, and his eyes opened to look at the doctor again. Then the eyelids closed halfway and the head did not respond to any further stimulation. Now, the details of these guillotine cases are disputed, so let's talk about something that's harder to dispute. Modern scientific evidence. The science of heads living separately from their bodies really began in the 1950s and 60s. Both the Soviets and Americans conducted head transplant experiments with animals, including dogs and monkeys. Most famous are Vladimir Demikhov and Robert J. White, both of whom successfully got animals to survive for multiple days after being detached from their own bodies. Currently in 2018, there is a team of researchers that are experimenting again with head transplants and have had some success in animals such as rats. Generally, the heads are attached to another animal, creating a two-headed ethical dilemma. But the question of whether consciousness survives decapitation is better informed by modern experiments using EEG, which is a measure of brain activity. If we take findings from experiments concerning the loss of consciousness in naturally dying humans, and compare them to findings from experiments looking at the loss of consciousness in intentionally sacrificed animals, a clearer picture emerges. This first study comes from a 2016 review paper, that looked at 19 human studies of brain function at time of death. Their conclusion was that, in humans, consciousness stops approximately 30 seconds after abrupt circulatory arrest, such as in the case of a heart attack stopping blood flow to the brain. Another study from 2014 interviewed survivors from such cardiac arrests. They found that there was some evidence that consciousness persists beyond what an onlooker would probably describe as death. That is, victims formed real memories and strange semi-conscious experiences during the period of time before they were resuscitated or brought back to life. These near-death experiences were shown to sometimes contain specific details relating to events that were occurring during resuscitation. Even more disturbing was the finding that one had a verifiable period of conscious awareness during which time cerebral function was not expected. In other words, the human brain seems capable of conscious experience in the last seconds of life following a break in circulation. Perhaps most convincingly and terrifyingly, a study from 2011 used EEG to track brainwaves of rats before and after decapitation. The study concluded that in awake rats, consciousness stopped about three or four seconds after decapitation. A handful of older studies also had similar conclusions about that three or four second mark. A 2016 paper reviewing the loss of consciousness in animals slaughtered for meat concludes that farm animals, in general, lose consciousness three to ten seconds following decapitation, depending on the species. Interestingly, brain activity seems to continue for longer in younger animals. While humans were not included in these studies, there doesn't seem to be any real reason why human consciousness should be excluded from this finding. So when we take all of the evidence together, it seems likely that a person could, theoretically, consciously experience decapitation. This is ironic when we consider that the French wanted to end criminals' lives instantly. Also ironically, many of those involved in the creation and implementation of the guillotine in French society were later executed by the guillotine, such as the Minister of Justice and the Committee of Public Safety. It really makes you wonder if they had a moment to appreciate the triple irony as they consciously experienced their head tumbling into the picnic basket. Leave a thumbs up if you experienced an existential crisis and or you just want me to know that you liked the video. Be sure to hit the subscribe and bell icons so that you never miss another video from this channel, and good luck sleeping the rest of your life. I'll see you next time.